See, you have a continuous time differentiator, a continuous time integrator. You also have the discrete time in integrator and discrete time differentiator. What is the difference between those two? And then, what kind of frequency response plot we get between those two? In the case of the discrete time differentiator, he gives the expression y and t is equal to 1 over 2 times, or rather 1 over t, x and t minus of x and t minus t. If you look to the term dx by dt, which is the continuous time differentiation, what we mean there is delta x divided by delta t, change in x with the change in time duration. In the case of the discrete time system, when you say change in x, it is the previous value minus the present value, which is the change. The previous value is x and t minus t, and the present value is x and t, and the difference between those two is delta x. And what is delta t? It's only the sampling time that we have. In that case, it is t. So in the case of the discrete time differentiator, it is x and t, the present input, minus the previous input divided by the sampling time. In the continuous time domain, it is delta x divided by delta t. So what he's saying there is, determine the amplitude and phase response for the discrete time differentiator. Here is the equation you have. Find out the amplitude ratio, amplitude as a function of frequency ratio r, and phase angle as a function of frequency ratio r. For this discrete time system. Then he says, plot the amplitude and phase response as a function of normalized frequency r. Compare these responses with the amplitude and phase response of a diff ideal differentiator. When you have different ideal differentiator, the expression is going to be like this. <coughs> HFS is say dx by dt. Based on the change that you are taking there, it is possible for us to find out what is the transfer function for the S domain expression for differentiation of a given function. It is simply S. Notice that integration we say is 1 over S. If you say differentiator, we put the term S in the block, saying that we are differentiating the term. So here we have H of S is equal to S for an ideal differentiator. Here you can find out the ratio of H of e to the power of J2 pi R based on the reference equation given to you. Once you get this, you can find out the magnitude and phase angle. In this case, set S is equal to J omega. What is the magnitude? Whatever frequency you have is the magnitude of H. What is the phase angle? Plus 90 degrees. So the magnitude and phase plot in the continuous time domain is pretty easy. In this case, the magnitude is simply the value of the angular frequency you have. The phase angle is simply plus 90 degrees. Compare that with the magnitude and phase angle response plots you get for the discrete time differentiator, and then you can say, what is the difference between a continuous time differentiator and the discrete time differentiator? Number of times we try to differentiate in the continuous time domain and also in the discrete time domain using the discrete time digital signal processor. Will they give the same kind of response or not? Or will their frequency responses be the same or not? That's a kind of plot you can plot and compare and see whether they have the same behavior or not, as the frequency varies from zero to a large value. 
Similarly, you'll also have 